the long wait is over, and the big hitters of Big Ball roll into Tucson, Arizona for the WPH Icebreaker Challenge. Brought to you by the World Players of Handball Outdoor. Clark Park is the epicenter of handball this weekend, and the best of the big ballers have come from both coasts to compete for bragging rights and prize money. The stars are out in Tucson as we break the ice after a long break in big ball action. It's mano a mano right now. Welcome to Tucson, Arizona for the WPH Icebreaker Challenge Outdoor Big Ball Action. My name is Dave Vincent alongside David Fink on this beautiful Saturday, and it's going to be a warm one. Shorty Ruiz and Alfredo Morales here in the semis of this challenge. Alfredo comes in here, Dave, as the number one seed, and he's looked like it, winning his first round comfortably. Shorty, as expected, a very close match with his former L.A. compatriot, Box Rosales winning that one in three games, one of the longest matches we've seen on the Icebreaker Tour. Well, you see that Alfredo Morales was the number one seed. Shorty Ruiz, kind of surprisingly, but also probably apropos, the number five seed. And they're clashing here in the upper bracket. A little later on, we'll bring you that Gonzalez Tellez semifinal from the bottom bracket, which is going to be a, a fun one to watch. And here's that first pitch, as they say. Beautiful looking park today. It's the sun is just making this thing pop. Oh, nice. Is it a dive or is that just sort of an orchestrated kind of attempt at this? That was sort of a flop dive. Fredo shows the great court coverage he has in that rally. Two dives. Point. Alfredo is at his best on these long courts where the sidewalls go to the back line. Says this is where he learned how to play. And we've seen him on these type of courts before, Dave. Have a lot of success. Ace serve there from Fredo. Now, does the ceiling come into play in this outdoor big ball arena here? Can you do enough with the ceiling is what I'm getting at to make it an offensive weapon like you can in small ball? No, I think it's more of a defensive shot. Effective, but I don't think you're going to make clean winners on a ceiling shot out here with the big ball. Look at that amazing kill shot from Fredo with the left hand. Sort of a modified kind of half change-up approach to a kill shot. And you see that a lot out here with this big ball. Is it because you can control it? The speed and the tempo a little bit better than you can with the small ball? Well, I think a player like Fredo certainly can. I mean, you don't see a lot of players doing it, but those that do know exactly what they're doing. If that's not a redundant statement. Wow. Fredo's completely in control here. As you can see, 6-0, playing to 15. You can see the bio on Shorty Ruiz. His strengths are his tap shots, his serve, and his fly kill. I believe one of his strengths is really a mental aspect to his game when he gets really upset with himself or needs to load up with power pellets. He seems to be able to kind of put on that Superman cape. Hmm. I don't know how you put that as a strength, but it's also a weakness of his. So it's a strength and a weakness. Yeah, but we've seen it more of a strength than a weakness. Mm. You have that ability to be down big and then come back and fight your way back. Shorty has that. Also, the ability to be up big and <laughs> lose <laughs> big matches, but... It's a sort of will. I think you see a lot of that amongst the top players, particularly in three wall where you can get on a run. You see Fredo's on one here. You get that serve in the right spot. It's going to be very hard for your opponent to earn side outs. Ooh, that's tough. You could almost say that if Ruiz was able to actually get his hand on that, 
that he's probably going to put it away. Hmm. Shorty had a couple of good looks to end the first rally of the match to score his first point. You remember Fredo flop dived in, and since then Shorty's really had no opportunities at all. And that time Shorty pushes Fredo past the back line. Now he's got his chance to score his first point. That was long. I actually felt like Fredo played that pretty darn good. Yeah. But he did as much as he could have from that position. Wow. That Great. control that Shorty had there. Able to pop that ball right back down that left with a fist? Not easy to do. And we've seen this, Dave, from Fredo for years. He makes the game look so easy. Oh, wow. Shorty kind of lost track of what was happening behind him there, and Fredo recognized that. And that's why he went for the kill there. Shorty expecting that shot to go up high. Unbelievable shot. And the confidence it takes to, to make that. It's that, more of a muscle reflex, I think, for Fredo at this point. Well, Dave, I think you'd be confident if you were up 12 to 1. Good point. You still have to be able to execute those shots, though. I wouldn't be able to execute that shot if I was up 99 to 1. <laughs> I'm just not sure how it spins out of the hand or any of, the, of that ilk. That was some good ilking there from Shorty. Three really good shots. And that's what it took to win his second point. Deep serve, good fly kill, and then puts away his third shot. Not a very good shot from Fredo. Pretty lazy. Hmm. Right in front of Shorty. And Shorty just had to tap it back. Does Shorty have one of those comebacks in him, Dave? That you mentioned at the opening? Maybe. Mm -hmm. I mean... Both players using the ceiling here. And if you go cross court with that tap shot from the deep court, you leave yourself open to a very easy rekill down the line, which is what Fredo did. Would you say that Fredo plays textbook? Yes, very high percentage game. And I can't remember, Dave, any of the greats ever not playing high percentage. In anything. Oh, wow. And he closes it out. Game number one going to Fredo Morales 15-4. to four. And this is traditional scoring. And it only took, what, seven minutes? Seven and a half minutes? That was pretty amazing handball there from Fredo. Led 12-1. Shorty scores three after that, but still finds himself down a game. Icebreaker challenge number 10 here in Tucson, Arizona. Men's semifinals of the big ball outdoor three wall portion of this experiment that we call the icebreaker Fredo Morales wins the first one Shorty had a great opportunity there and dipped it in I think that's the right shot there for Shorty with Fredo so far behind him just not one to give him a chance to get himself back into the front court but unfortunately for Shorty he misses that shot well Fredo's so good that you go for the one inch kill shot and that's a beautiful overhand flop from pretty deep from Shorty but I don't think Shorty needed to be that perfect with Fredo being so far back Point. 
And Dave, you sort of reintroduced yourself to Big Ball this weekend as well, playing in the qualifiers. And there are certainly a bunch of differences between the sports, but does because the ball stays up so much and you are on the court with longer rallies, does the brightness of this court come into play much more than the small ball? And I say that because small ball, you can it only take maybe three or four shots before the rally ends. Here you might have 19 shots, mm. and it just seems mathematically that the sun would be a bigger factor, although with a bigger, slower ball, maybe it doesn't. Well, I was quite a bit more tired playing big ball than I was small ball, but I think that's a lot to do with not being accustomed to the swings and the ball. And it seems like these guys can keep the ball down pretty well. I can't. This is not the kind of game you're going to overpower someone with a serve. The lob, I think, is probably the biggest shot in this game, whereas you would not lob anything with a small ball. You would drive it with as much power as you could overhand or with a fist. Pretty lazy return there. And Shorty takes care of it. There's so many flat rollouts here. And when I played this game, I've never been able to do that ever once. And I'm not trying to be humble, but these guys, for some reason, like you said, you couldn't keep the ball down flat. They're able to do it for such nonchalant stances. Yeah. Is it th that they're topping the ball? I'm still well, trying to figure it out. Well, I think it's like anything. When you're played for so many years, you develop that comfort level and swing to be able to end the rally. You're not going to have that playing it once in a while, particularly when you're accustomed to playing with a different ball. Fredo Morales will be stepping into the coaching chair. He taught the, the lob. Oh, he did? Yeah. Can't wait to see that. So get a chance to watch him lob here, and then he's going to break it down step by step, how he hits a shot like he just did there. And that'll be a separate feature that we that run? will. Yeah, okay, great. I can't wait. So I guess I didn't film this one. No, you didn't. <laughs> All right. That means one less thing that I did not micromanage. Hmm. There's a view of our complex here. As the players go chase the balls down here in Clark Park. One serves two. Little drone footage for you. That was with a fist. Four points into this game and it's been almost as long as the first game took. True. We're about five minutes into this second game. The first game took just seven minutes. Well, we're seeing a lot of unforced errors from Fredo Morales in game number two. Going for kill shots, and he's missing them. I'm sure he has to be frustrated there because he had a good look at a first strike fly kill, hit it right back to Fredo, and then Fredo wins the rally there. It's interesting with these guys that when one of them goes up to the roof... The other one will go up to the roof. And when one of them hits the ball with extra oomph, the other one puts some MPH on it. Have you noticed that? Well, Fredo said he's ready for anything that these top players can bring. He knows what all these guys are capable of. And if he senses that they're stepping it up, he's also going to step it up. That's one of the things he told me. Well, I noticed that when Shorty hits that nonchalant ball down the left wall, that's when Fredo does the same thing. Same speed. You got that shot, but I have it a little bit lower. One of the things that makes Fredo so great and dangerous is with the same swing, he can hit a kill or a lob. And that ball just skipped in. So it's very hard to read his shots. And if he senses that you're moving forward, he'll throw it over your head. Does he ever get upset or even talk on the court? I've never seen that. I mean, talk about one of the all-time best sportsmen. In handball. Another skip? Yep. You know how many players would argue those last two that he missed? He just gave them up. I I, I know that they were actually skips, but... I don't nope. know. I haven't seen one argument in icebreaker play, and this is the 10th icebreaker. Five, 
There's a good view of Josh. Josh scouting. If he's able to get through his matches, he would face the winner of this in the final. He and Fredo have a great rivalry in Southern California. Or serving five. Fredo has not been sharp here in this second game. Five, seven, five. What's the heat index on these courts right now, Dave? I know 108. You know. 108. Point. And climbing. Six, seven, five. It's only about 9 a.m. right now. And the Tucson sun doesn't really start to hit until about 10 or 10.30. About 10 to 4 is the hottest times of the day in Tucson. Try to get these matches in before that, but... I was looking at the National Weather Service, and last year, during that crazy drought, the hottest part of the day, a few days were in the 6 p.m. Hmm. frame, which is most places are winding down six, for the day. Six. Hottest part of the day at 6.02. But you're right, 4 o'clock, 2 o'clock is a scorcher. Serving six. What a shot. If that's not right on the wall, Shorty's going to re-kill that. But somehow, Fredo is able to feather that from the left wall to the right wall. Alfredo Morales is five foot eleven. He resides in Tustin, California. His favorite athlete was Kobe Bryant. Highest ever ranking on the outdoor pro tour with the world players of handball. Outdoor was number one. And his strengths, very similar to a Dave Chapman outdoor three-wall player. His lob, his defense, his control, his patience. And he's really looked upon by the other players as being El Hombre. His biggest win was the 2016 WPH X-Fest which was a combination of small ball and big ball. And we didn't even know that he could play small ball until he went in there and kind of pretty much whipped everybody. Dave, I believe you played him in small ball and three wall. Yes, I did not get whipped. No, you actually did the whipping. But since he scored enough points in that tournament, mm -hmm. he ended up being the winner. And also it incorpor incorporated one wall as well. Right. I remember that uh, being a pretty big win for you. And you came off the court saying, this guy can play small ball. Yeah, it's very good. Powerful and yeah. strange positions. We we hadn't seen him 55 feet back with a left hand before, and yet he handled it like he's done it all his whole right. life. That's one thing I remembered, other than only scoring two points in one game. But he was pretty impressive. Yeah, he would definitely be one of the top 10 small ball, three ball players right now. Look at how good that is with the left hand. Very nonchalant to the roof from Ruiz. And just a couple points away now from pushing himself into the finals, it looks. Just look like he cleaned up his game a little bit here in the second half of this second game. We saw seven airs. Well, as the barometer rises, mm -hmm. so does the play from... Fredo, he just wants to get this over with. And look at that little shot. Incredible. He has just the perfect spin to slice that ball down right. the left wall. Yes. And it was all done on purpose. Look at that shot. Again, Fredo takes down Shorty Ruiz and now is in the finals of icebreaker number 10 here in Tucson, Arizona. Alfredo Morales from California coming into Tucson, Arizona. He will now be in the final and up for some ranking points and big bucks. For Dave Fink, my name is Dave Vincent. Thanks for tuning in.